Bravo, he's out there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to another SIFT video. The SIFT test is the selection instrument for flight training test uh, given by the United States Army. Uh, for all of you that are going into rotary wing aviation, um, so let's just jump right in. Um, first of all, I'd like to point out that whenever you see this symbol in a slide, it's probably something you're going to run into on the uh, SIFT test. So uh, when you see the symbol, it's definitely something you want to um, pay attention to, or the information in that slide you want to, uh, you know, take notice of. This video is going to discuss the component sections and systems found on most modern helicopters. Helicopters, they come in a variety of sizes and shapes, but uh, most share the same major components. Here we have a clip from the actual Federal Aviation Administration on the major helicopter components. We have the cabin, the main rotor system, the tail rotor system, the transmission, the power plant, and the landing gear. So these, this will be a helicopter or what we would classify as a rotary wing aircraft. So let's uh, jump in and talk about the fuselage. The fuselage basically houses um, cockpit, cargo, uh, the cockpit holds the, cat, the cr air crew that are actually uh, manipulating the controls to operate the helicopter. Um, here we have a slide, you can see the cockpit, you can see the pilot, co-pilot up front, and um, here we have an air crew member that's probably uh, just making sure that the cargo is secure. So that is the fuselage. It's the outer core, pretty much the airframe, and it's the helicopter's main body. And you can read the rest of that. The next component we're going to talk about are rotor systems. Uh, here we have a two types of main rotor systems. Uh, the main rotor system uh, basically it rotates the rotors and generates lift. Uh, in the slides on the left, you, we can see the uh, mast hub and rotor blades on both of these types of systems. We're going to go into the different types. Uh, first, we have uh, the rotor mast. Um, this comes up. And, um, we have a, a swash plate here, um, and we can see some linkages that actually controls the angle of attack of the main rotor blades here. Uh, so this thing kind of tilts and actually moves the blade angles. The mass hollow is a, well. The mass is a hollow cylindrical metal shaft that extends upwards and is driven driven and sometimes supported by the transmission. Um, and at the top of the mass is the attachment point for the uh, rotor blades called the hub. Main rotor systems are classified according to how the main rotor blades are attached and more um, and move relative to the main rotor hub. The first system we're going to talk about, or we'll we'll go into all three. We'll talk about all three systems briefly, but we have the rigid system here. We have the semi semi rigid, and then we have the fully articulated system. All right, and we can see our SIFT icon there. So this is probably something that if you are preparing to take the SIFT test, you want to be paying attention to. Uh, the rigid system is pretty much the simplest uh, mechanically. Um, they're structurally uh, concept complex because the loads have to be absorbed through bending rather than through hinges. So the bending or flexing comes from the main rotors here that are attached at the mast hub uh, and this 
rigid system uh, the blade roots are rigidly attached to the motor hub and um, they don't lead or lag which we'll talk about in the, f in the fully articulated system uh, but we do get some flexing or flapping so the lift is provided by the rotor blades and that's how the load is carried similar to an airplane when an airplane takes off when it's on the ground all right when it's on the ground the landing gear pretty much hold or support the weight of the aircraft uh, and then as the airplane starts to take off the load is transferred from the landing gear to the wing so very very similar when a helicopter's on the ground the landing gear landing landing gear system be it skids pontoons or wheels are supporting the helicopter and then as the main rotor rotates lift is developed by the rotor blades and they kind of flex a little bit and, and take on or the weight is transferred to the rotors this is a semi rigid rotor system Okay, here we have a LAPD helicopter that has a semi rotor system. All right, usually composed of two blades. Um, here we can actually see how the, the rotor is attached, and this base, this basic, uh, basically this system kind of teeters. We have what we call a teetering hinge that allows the blades to kind of rock like a seesaw. So that's why I put the seesaw image in here. So when this one goes down, this one goes up. When this blade goes up, this one goes down. Just like the seesaw. If two kids were sitting on the seesaw, this kid goes up, this kid goes down. This kid goes up, this kid will go down. So the blades kind of flap together as a unit. Here we have the fully articulated system and so um, the difference between the other two rotor systems is we have some hinges. We have a drag hinge. We have a drag hinge. Uh, we have a flap hinge. The flap hinge allows the rotor to flap up and down. The drag hinge allows the blade to move uh, back and forth. So we have leading, lagging, or flapping going on. Now the flapping hinge can be anywhere, depending on the design of the rotor system. It could be a various, various di distances from the main rotor hub. The main rotor hub will be attached here. And um, it allows the system to just move up a little bit and down so the load is carried by just flexing a little bit so it's not a rigid system here's a image where we could actually see the flapping so if we come back this hinge here the flap hinge allows this whole system to move up and down sort of like this we come back to our drag hinge and the drag hinge allows the rotor to move back and forth like this as this whole system is rotating the rotor can move slightly forward and slightly back in what we would call a leading position or a lagging position here is the AH-64 Apache and this uh, has a fully articulated system so that's one of the uh, things now here's a couple other examples of helicopters and in this slide I just asked the question notice anything different about these helicopters if we look at the major components of helicopters I'll give you guys a second what's missing okay I have a pointer over the tail rotor system. Notice that these guys do not have tail rotor system. And these guys do. Notice anything different? Well, I'll tell you. 
the this helicopter and this helicopter they actually have two rotors. These don't. Okay, and just think of these as rotor systems. This one has two rotors. This one has two rotors. This one has one rotor system. This one has one rotor system. So what's the deal with that? Well, helicopters with single main rotor systems require a separate anti-torque system. And if we come back, this tail rotor system is the anti-torque system. So we got to think about why. Why is this? Why do these guys need a tail rotor or anti-torque system? Well, this takes us all the way back to a gentleman by the name of Sir Isaac Newton who created or discovered the three laws of motion. And the third law of what we're concerned with is for every action there's an equal opposite reaction. So what does that mean? Well, as this main rotor rotates, that is the initial action. And the reaction would be this tail rotor wanting to go to the left. So the tail rotor, I'm sorry, the main rotor rotates clockwise. I'm sorry, counterclockwise. And the tail, which would be the reaction, would want to move clockwise. So if you've seen my other videos on uh, basic helicopter controls, which we have a a cyclic pitch or cyclic pitch, anti-torque pedals, and a collective control. The anti-torque pedals is the uh, the pedals are a device that are used to counteract this system. And I've kind of highlighted that. I've shown you in this slide. I'm showing you the anti-torque system, or tail rotor system, and they are controlled by these foot pedals. So, in using these anti-torque pedals, we actually counteract um, the tendency for the tail to want to go clockwise. And when we use them, then these two forces kind of come off. So, the initial force is the tail wanting to go counterclockwise. When we use or manipulate the anti-torque pedals, we have a vector going a force vector going this way and basically it kind of zeroes out and the helicopter flies straight power plants there's basically two type of uh, power plant systems we have uh, just like say like your Cessnas Piper aircraft Beechcraft aircraft we have a reciprocating engine system I'm not going to go into details too much um, but the power plant and we call it a they're engines but we call them power plants because they do more than just drive they provide electrical energy uh, they could provide uh, okay electrical energy um, air conditioning um, ventilation um, there's all there's multiple things that these power plants can do and that's why we call them power plants because they don't just drive like an engine but they actually provide auxiliary uh, functions here we have a turbine system all right, the turbine system. I have videos on how turbines work. Uh, very similar in jet engines and um, rotary wing uh, engines, but um, we'll talk about that in another video. Transmission systems. The transmission system is a way of connecting the engine to the rotor hub and tail rotor system. Normally, the main road, the main rotor, has a gear system uh, that is attached to the engine and then to the uh, rotor mast and or the mast hub, rotor mast hub, and then we have the tail rotor that does not need to move or rotate as fast as like the main rotor. So we have a gear, a gearbox that kind of reduces the it, it, it adds it adds some gear to actually help this rotate just a little bit slower but the uh, connections are um, control the connections to control this this tail rotor are um, connected to the um, anti-torque pedals landing gear systems okay there are various different types of landing gear systems uh, this one actually has wheels 
for landing gear. This is a landing gear skid system and this is a pontoon system and some of these pontoon systems have a system where land, uh, wheels can extend um, to land on like hard surfaces or like this is just kind of like a grass field that this helicopter is in so it can land on water it can land on grass and if it has landing gear uh, wheel extension systems wheels can be extended in order to support the load of the aircraft so that's basically about it um, just to recap we talked about the fuselage which consists of the airframe cabin housing the uh, cockpit pilot co-pilot passengers and cargo we talked about the main rotor systems for the uh, SIFT guys they're going to talk about the tests will probably more than likely cover the three main rotor systems which are rigid semi-rigid and fully articulated uh, next is we talked about the tail rotor system or the anti-torque system that counteracts the torque produced by the main rotor we talked about the transition which is a gear system that connects to the main rotor system and the tail rotor system uh, that will be the transmission the power plant is basically the engine and we talked about the various types of landing gear so I hope this video helped you gain a better understanding of rotary wing aircraft one-on-one -on -one tutoring is available and please like subscribe and share and I'll learn how to spell <laughs> you be there we go please like subscribe and share thanks for watching and have a great evening this is Keno Thomas with Keno training systems bye